Oh yeah. Tip tap do. What's up? Today I'm working on achievements. My goal is to get, uh, I got a few achievements created here on Steam and now I can go and uh, work on coding them up. So Songbreaker has achievements. What's up, Teak? Yeah, you get it? You get it? I was tipping and tapping because I thought you might still have the window open. That was all for you. <laughs> I'm so glad that worked. Ah, oh, that was awesome. Uh, all right, so I think we're ready to do... Um, I got some, some leaderboard code created, and I also got some achievement code created for the menus and stuff. But what I want to do is actually set an achievement right now and set a leaderboard score. So we're going to be pushing some data up to Steam servers, basically. We're going to like push up the fact that I unlocked this achievement. And also, we're going to push up uh, a leaderboard score. And then I'm going to go and try and view the leaderboard. So if I can actually get to the point where I view the leaderboard and view the achievements in the game today, that would be pretty sweet. But I'll at least get it started. Uh, what? 4,037 points. Nice, man. Whenever you want to do it, all you got to do is give away 38 points. Blam. It's going to be 3999 time. I'm pretty excited for that. Whenever you whenever you want to do that. Hey, oh, and Bafu's here today. Hey. What's up, Bafu? Okay, so the end of the game, we just need to go there and post a score. Let's do it. Um, where do we get the end? Oh yeah, phase ending. Actually, where does it where does it call? I think it's K flux ending. Oh yeah, this gets called from gear system right here. All right, this is a pretty good place to put this code. Salad dogs. Yeah, you got you got to wait for Zilton. Yeah, Zilton is important to be here when that happens. Yeah, and and you and it'll be funnier with him here, especially if you. If you don't get it, oh my god. What are the chances that you don't get it? It's like so minimal. <clears throat> Alright, no, no, okay, not here. I want to do it actually in the, the flux phase ending where it actually has computed all of your end game score and all that. Wait, where does this, where does that happen? Oh, it's in, cre it's in phase credits, that's right. Here we go. You have to prove the point. You do, right? Oh man, I'm excited for this. Where does it do the credit? Oh, here it is, tally score, huh? This is a good name for something? All right, take tally score. Pretty clear what this is doing. Okay, so we've computed the map percent, the item percent, overall percent. Where are these cons? This is... Why isn't any of these cons? Let's do that. Better code. Wait out. See, there's one that was... What's this one? Oh, overall percent. All right, yeah, overall percent, that's fine. We could be a float. Everybody else is a cons float. Okay, so we've computed all the get the end game score. Right here, this is where we want to go post to the the Steam the, the Steam achievements and the uh, the leaderboard. So you're gonna it's gonna post your score to the score leaderboard. Right now, there's three leaderboards for Songbringer. There's there, it sorts based on score. So score is like a combination of all three factors of your score. There's three factors. One is your time to complete Songbringer. Two is your percentage of items. Three is your percentage of the map that you uncovered. So all three of those combined to create a score. 
And uh, so now kind of the score one will kind of be general. And then there, and then the other two are pretty interesting. There's any percent and hundred percent. So that's kind of going with speedrunners, um, the how they do their competitions and stuff. And I just want it to be really cool for that. So any percent, and it's, um, you know, other games on Steam are doing it that way too. So, um, anyways, there's any percent, and that means that you just completed the game with any percentage of items. And then wait, is that right? Hold on, I might just be assuming here. I've been watching all these vids and stuff, like assuming that I know, but. Let's define this. It, it, please chime in if anybody knows the exact definition of any percent. Is it is it is any percent based on your items or is that also sometimes taking into account map or some other kind of percentage? Here we go. For a noob, what exactly does any percent mean? Any percent just means that complete the game with any percentage of completion. So it doesn't matter. Okay, so is there an actual definition for 100% speedrun? Yeah, any percent is get yeah, I'm getting that part. Yeah, glitches are allowed. But what um, but when it comes to 100% then is it based on co items or is it map or like or does this, is it change every single game? Every game is different based on whatever, you know, the speedrunning community decides is 100%. A run with a completion requirement of collecting 100% of the items. Of the items. Okay. And games without a percentage counter the community decides what parts of the game are important enough to count towards 100 Okay. Now games lend themselves well towards 100% definition. Got it. All right. 100% tends to vary from game to game. It usually means achieving all things you can do. Yeah. So it could, yeah, it does depend on the game. But I guess for, so I guess for Songbringer, we'll call this, is 100% for Songbringer. Let's decide this right now. 100% Songbringer. Is that is that map? Or is it items? Or is it both map and items? Because I, I was just going to call it items. And that would be that would be pretty pretty awesome, right? You got through you got through all of Songbringer, and that would actually help with um, actually 100% would really help with speedruns if we define 100% speedruns as only items, not map. So 100% Super Metroid is collecting all items, right? But it's not uncovering 100% of its map, right? 100% Super Mario is you getting all exits, right? Okay, I get it. Yeah. So far, I'm le I'm just basically just thinking that it should just be based on your items, and then map percentage getting 100 is just kind of like extra prestige, and it doesn't. But it doesn't really get you on the 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 way to get on the 100% leaderboard for Songbringer is to get 100% items. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't. Yeah. All teeth. Yeah. All the items. <clears throat> All right, great. So we can we've now defined what 100% means. Okay, so we can post to we need to post to two different leaderboards here. Out of 3, there's three different leaderboards. We're going to post to to two of them. Oh, there is a category for um where you can include the 100% map. Oh, that's what I could just do. I could make a freaking another leaderboard. Yeah, I can make another leaderboard for just map percentage, 100%. Oh, Zilton. Zilton, you're here today. This is great. So Teak is like, he's he's going to be right back. But Teak has 100%, or no, Teak has over 4,000 points now, thanks to you. And he wants to use his 39999 
thing. Uh, no, I, I so Violet's a, yeah, it was going to be based on um, per seed, right? I had kind of imagined that in my head when I started Songbringer. But okay, let's say I were to actually do that. On Steam, you can only have 10,000 leaderboards. And there's 300 million different seeds. So if I were to actually put a different leaderboard per seed, it wouldn't actually be possible on Steam. And it would be in highly... It would be high, it would be ridiculous trying to do that with my own trying my own server or something like that. So no, it's not really feasible to have a leaderboard per seed. I kind of wish there would be, but there's got to at least it's got to at least show your seed though somehow. You know what? It does. Crap! Right now the way the leaderboards are designed, um, we can't see seeds. Unless I think of some wicked cool way to do that. Oh, they do have 64-bit integer numbers in the leaderboard. Huh. <laughs> right, yes, there will be. Yeah, Teak. And maybe top seeds? Okay, so if there were top seeds, um, I wonder how I would actually do that, though. I would, You know what I would have to do? I would have to wait for the community to build up enough seeds that get popular, and then I would have to choose the popular ones after the fact and be like, okay, you know, I've got 10,000 different leaderboards I could show here, which is, which is getting kind of unmanageable, but still, let's say we were to go, to go that. Let's maybe there's maybe there's just the top 50 seeds. I would still have to wait for those top 50 seeds to like show themselves. Daily challenges? There might be something like that. I don't know. I I don't I kind of want the game to feel more timeless though. Yeah, I think it's Steam key. You can type help. Yeah, right. Some seeds will become more popular. I mean, I, maybe there should, oh, there's got to be a way for me to embed the seed. Yeah, you know what? I can definitely embed the seed in a score. But that will mess up the time ones. Okay, I got it. I got it. So what we'll do, no, man, that will definitely change the score one, too. Crap. I, I was thinking you could embed you can embed the entire seed into part of the 32-bit integer. Oh wait, no 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 no. I think Steam has you know what I'm not gonna worry about this for a minute. I think Steam has a way for you to set user data per Yeah, there's some way to set some user data for this. I can figure this out. Okay, anyways, I'll think about how to do this. You're thinking about easy, wait, easiest seats? Yes, Teak! Oh, you won. You had a 99.975% chance. So there, there was, what? there's 0.025% chance you could have lost, man. You could do what Axie Verge did for its speedrun mode. It uses a fixed seed. All randomly generated stuff is generated the same in that mode. Oh, I didn't know Axie Verge did it that way. That's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting, but I, I don't like it because it doesn't give you um it doesn't give the the choice to the speedrunner, right? Because the speedrunning community could come up and say, like, you know what, we really like this seed, or they really want to they really want to run this seed. So I want them to be able to kind of, yeah, I want there to kind of be a leaderboard almost for every seed that's popular, or maybe that's popular for speedrunners. Or shit, maybe I should just, maybe I should just be, should just decide up front before all this, before the game ever is released, I should decide like a hundred different seeds that are going to be the popular ones or whatever. 
because they'll be promoted that way. So there could be a hundred different seeds and like they're all just the, the popular words, like some of the words we already have, have been using for seeds here to test with, like like Canada, Xanadu, Tuxedo, Wizard, Butter, like all these, you know, we could come up with like a hundred different really cool seed words and then those could just be the ones that are tracked. So speedrunners could play these and then you, you'd know that it was one of the one of the shared seeds that would kind of work that would be a simple way of doing it what's up zanger <laughs> all right Okay, so anyways, that's enough rambling and thinking about how to do seeds for now. Um, I will need some thoughts on achievements, though. So if you guys have some ideas, please please share your ideas on achievements. I got any percent means you complete the game with any percentage of items. And 100% means you complete the game with 100% of all items. Those are just two achievements so far. I'm thinking the game is going to have somewhere between like 20 and 40 different achievements some of these achievements can be hidden which is pretty cool so i'd love to have like maybe five to ten different hidden achievements so you don't know what they are until you achieve them yeah like speed run what's up clock yes yeah what if you lost is one of the seeds purple it can be And now it is. You would have proven the point system is rigged, right? Okay, so anyways, I'm going to post to the leaderboards for now. I'm just going to do the post to the... So, for now, let me just, let me just comment this out. Or comment out. Leaderboards. There is uh, score. Any percent. Basically, score is any percent. Oh, let's make that. Any percent um, completed the game by any means. 100% completed the game with with all items score is basically any percent sorted by score clock what's up clock Go achievement go AFK for 24 hours consecutively in a game. <laughs> that would probably have to be a hidden one. Low percent. Oh yeah, low percent should be one. Okay, so Vile, tell me tell me what you mean by low percent. How do you how does that work? Um I was I saw those on uh what's low percent? Is this defined right here? Oh yeah. A run that completes the game with the bare minimum lowest percentage. That's dope. So making this an achievement, I guess you would have to cut cut the cut it at some point, like right? If you got under 25%, you that would be counted as a low percent or whatever. This can take a lot longer than any percent depending on the game. Huh. Oh yeah. Interesting. I like this. Okay, let me start. I'm gonna start making a list of achievements to add. Mm, let's definitely do low percent. That's awesome. That'd be a cool achievement. Maybe it's like under 25. I don't know. You want an achievement for being in the credits? Oh, that's kind of cool. 
Yeah. That's actually kind of cool. If you, well, like, it could be a hidden achievement in the credits. I don't know how you would do, I think it would. I would have to get everybody's Steam usernames, though, or Steam IDs. So it would kind of be, I don't know how, I could, I could pull this off. Um, in the credits, and I think that one would be a hidden achievement. So it's not like everybody in the world is like, oh my god. Actually, this would suck for some people. This would really suck. Would suck for most people. Because most people are going to see a hidden achievement on their list that they can't get. No, this would suck for most completionists. Completionists would be pissed off about this one. Anyways, that's still an idea. Taking zero damage? Definitely. Definitely, yeah. That should, that's a definite... Oh, that's an awesome one. You want an achievement called I Name That, Greg? How about an achievement for hitting an enemy with the sword projectile and the top hat at the same time? All right. Hitting an enemy with sword and top hat? Wait, oh, go sword and top hat simultaneous. Or this could also be perhaps like perhaps just two or more weapons at once. You know, that can be more of a general one, right? You get it like by bombing and top hatting or whatever. Possibly. Or just one that triggers when you hit a specific bush with a specific weapon and don't tell anyone which bush and weapon. <laughs> right? That's the totally hidden one? Okay. All right. Totally. Uh, a single bush gets hit. And it's hidden. That's, a, that's hard, but at least the completionists could figure that out. Top hat only run? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm thinking top hat only. Okay, this one is also, might be interesting to... Um, okay, I would also want to see no sword, right? So there's top hat only, and then there's no sword. Okay. Yeah, once you got the top hat. Hey, what's up, Pedro? There should be an achievement for encountering a glitch. It sounds cool, but I don't know how the game would detect that. Uh, low percent or minimalist completion requires the player to complete the game, attain the least amount of key. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, low percent's awesome. If the fastest way to complete the game already involves player picking up the least amount of key items or grades, the low percent category may not exist for the game's speed runs. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you mean you mean like Zilton? Are you talking about using lots and lots of cactuses? How about get? We'll just call this one get getting really high. This one might be hidden. Right, so you use like so many cactuses that you just like trip out for so long and it's an achievement. Kill one of every type of enemy. That's cool. That's a really great one for, um, for completionists as well. Kill one of every enemy. Yeah, and that's a great one to not be hidden, too. You can call that odd job run, <laughs> odd job run. Oh, that's kind of cool. Odd job run. Yeah, good call, Saldongs. Teak just won. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's so funny. Bapu has a sense of humor. We've just established. What? What would be really f horrible for people with 100%? Oh, no worries. Inverted keys run? Oh, so so it's a cha it's more of a challenge where like the game uh, plays it's a game mode it's an entirely different game mode where the game changes all your keys I'll put that as an idea inverted keys mode I don't know I don't know about this one <clears throat> Yeah, there's already already using the only using the hat top hat only right there. The true ending you get it for ending debug mode. Ain't no party like a when you complete the game on one hit point. Complete the game on one hit point. Does that mean you? Does that mean you have to just complete the game with exactly one health, or does that mean that you have to play the entire game at one health? Complete the game with the starting gear. That's going to be impossible. Yeah, you're going to have to get at least one weapon. Just to fight enemies, you know, and, and take down the bosses and complete the game. You have to at least get the top hat or the sword or some bombs. Or the blink. The blink is now a weapon. Ain't no party like a Songbreer party. Player spends five consecutive minutes in the room with the party guests on the Songbreer. Oh, you just spend five minutes there? I don't know about this one. I don't want I don't want the achievements to turn into a grind. This kind of this one kind of sounds grindy. But I'll put it on the list of for ideas here. Spend five minutes on Songbringer. Yeah, call complete dungeons backwards. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great idea. Totally. Complete dungeons backwards. I don't even know how the player would do this. I think this would require glitches because the game is going to be designed that you have to have some of the earlier items to get through the gates of the Wait, no. No. No, there's bombable walls. I forgot about the bombable walls. There will be some worlds for sure where you can bomb. You can bomb as long as you have found the bombs, which you can actually buy in a store at the very beginning. So as long as you get the bombs, you can you could t you could theoretically play the entire game just simply by getting into the ninth dungeon, bombing your way backwards. Or maybe no, no. Actually, you could totally figure this out if you, even in some cases where you would have to get a certain gate item, like you have to get the ghost sword to get through and beat the, a certain boss or whatever. You could always go to dungeon five, collect an item, like collect the ghost sword, then go back, you know, collect all the items you need and then go back to like dungeon first. First thing you do is beat dungeon nine. Yeah. Okay, this is totally, this is totally doable in any speed run or any, any world could pull this off. That's a rad achievement. You know what I mean? That's a lot of a lot of prestige and honor comes with this. Okay, how about this? You, how about complete complete the game in permadeath mode? That should be on here. You know what I mean? You should if you've beat the game in permadeath mode, that's pretty rad. Is 
Insta jab, kill five enemies within X amount of seconds. Five enemies within X seconds. It's on the ideas. Oh, oh, maybe the player has to interact with every party guest. Oh, no, that's an that that makes that more interesting. That's let that's less grindy for sure. So, um, yeah, yeah, interact with all NPCs. How about that? You've found every NPC. You've talked to every NPC. That that's mostly going to be you know on Songbringer. You're going to find a lot of that. That's kind of so that's cool. Yeah, now it's a now it's a good one. I like it. Yeah, reverse boss order definitely doesn't have to be easy. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen Super Metroid's RBO. Oh my god. That's gonna be like that's gonna be an hour and a half of tonight's night for me. I'm sure I'm gonna watch a reverse boss order speed run of Super Metroid or whatever. Visit every area in the world. Yeah, I think I had. Oh no, that's not a, that's not here on the list yet. Yeah, so um, that's basically. 100% map. If you get 100% of your map uncovered, boom, that's a, that's definitely a... Oh, we don't even have the achievement on here of 100% items. You know, that's, of course, going to be one of them. An achievement for using certain seeds? <laughs> uh well the one thing i want about for achievements though is that i want them to feel like you actually are rewarded for something i don't i i'm against i'm against achievements that are too easily achieved because they're just cheesy and corny they're in every day every game every mobile game you've ever played has cheesy ass achievements in it right well not every i'm not of course i'm generalizing here i'm just trying to make a funny point but um yeah I don't like games with cheesy achievements, so I don't think I don't think playing a certain seed is is has enough weight as an achievement yet. But maybe that idea could just be different somehow. Oh sweet! Oh, you got a link? This <laughs> is I'm telling you, here's an hour and a half tonight. This is fun, man. I love these achievements. Okay, we got some really good ones. I'm gonna start coding now. If anybody has any more thoughts or whatever, any other, any more ideas, I'm totally open here, and um, and we will uh, I'll add, I'll add it to the ideas list for sure, and maybe it'll be an actual achievement. We'll see. Okay, so I want to post to um the leaderboards here if the player's item percentage. Here, let's put this down below this. So if item percent is greater than or equal to 1.0, we're going to post to the 100% leaderboard. Seems to be the best achievement served to add extra gameplay. Yeah, they're right. It's like, yeah, exactly. It's like it gives you a reason to get deeper into the game and rewards you for it, right? Yeah. Although I think it's fine if there are a couple that just exist to give you a chuckle, right? Yeah. Yeah. As long as they're not too cheesy. My personal my personal opinion. Like you started a game. That's that's definitely something I don't want to put as an achievement, right? That's that's mobile. It says like what are you gonna slap me with an eye app here and like in a second make me pay two dollars to keep playing? All right. Um, oh yeah. So this is gonna be kit community. Do I have this? Oh no. We need kit services here. Kit services. It's a little um, class I got for. Oops.
for handling all the platform specific code. You pressed forward. You explored the extent of the options menu. You went all the way deep, as deep as you could into the options. You changed every option. All right, let's, uh, let's do achievement first, huh? If I had a percent is greater than or equal to 100, we are gonna set the, um, what key was that? Community set achievement, 100. No, I think it's 100. Hundred percent. I think that's what I named that. Okay, next up we wanna post um to the leaderboard. I think this one is also uh, I forget the names. You walked north. One of the first ever using a seed. That's interesting. Huh. Because I, I, that's interesting, but complex to, to, uh, to implement because I have to set up a server for that. That tracks everyone and tracks who played what seed, you know. Wait, no, maybe I could do that with Steam data. No, oh, yeah, maybe I could do that. Okay. I'll consider that one. So that's an interesting thought. First one to play a certain seed. That's pretty interesting because considering considering the game will will never be played by 300 million people. It's just a, it's just a, a fact of today's game market size. I'll be lucky if if a million people ever play this game. Really lucky. I'll be incredibly lucky if a million people play this game. I'll be really, really lucky if a hundred thousand people play this game. I'll be okay if ten thousand people even played this game. So there's no way, there's practically no way that every seed in this game will ever be played. That's crazy. So this could this could totally work. You could be the first one to play a certain seed. If I could figure out how to do that with Steam data, that would be really cool. Because then I wouldn't have to have my own server. Sweet. You died a thousand times. Okay. I'll put that on the ideas list, all right? Died a thousand times? That's a lot. How about just a hundred? That's actually really, really frustrating for completionists, though. It's, that's true. Died ten thousand times? Oh, clock was B on one hit point X amount of times in a run and survive. That's kind of interesting. Uh huh. I like that. B on one hit point X times and survive. That's kind of interesting. And yeah, and I guess that could add a nice layer of challenge to players as well. Like, you know, you're and you, you see this one, it's it's not hidden, right? This would be an un this would be a visible one, visible achievement. And you could see that as a if I were a completionist, which I guess I am, and I get and I went in here and saw this, I would be like, Okay, I can do that. And it might add a nice challenge to the game, get me deeper into the game. Yeah, yeah, discovering a seed. Yeah, yeah. All right, that. That would totally be possible for everybody. Hey, 
Hey, what's up? I'm Wibbly. I like achievements to show that the developer was thinking about you doing something that you wouldn't think he was considering. Interesting. I like that. I like that too. Are any of these in here already like that? Or are there ones we could possibly add? Even died a hundred times is a lot. I don't know. But anyways, it's just an idea. Okay, so let's set to the leaderboard. Hundred. Hundred percent leaderboard is your time, which is double play time. Times milliseconds. I hope I named these right. Oh, we definitely want to post the score leaderboard as well. So that's, uh, what's the overall score here? Oh, overall percent. Look at the score. Come on, show me the score. Time items at uh, score here. Here's score. There we go. Find the ideal path straight away from start to finish. I'm going to the, the find the ideal path for a run. Ooh, that's hard. That would be really hard. Wait, what's T? Uh-oh. So we want to capture score. And multiply by T here. And now we can post the score to the leaderboard. Blam! Score. Okay, there we posted to th all the leaderboards we would for 100% speed run or 100% run. And now we're going to do any percent. Hundred percent. Maybe it could be as simple as just having a server side text file with seeds that have been used in it. Yeah, yeah. When a player starts a new game, it checks the server to see its seeds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. It, would be, it wouldn't have to be that complicated, but it would be a lot better if I could use Steam data for it because it'll just be more long-term future-proof, you know? Only thing is the maximum size that file would reach could be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what their server policies are. It's a good point. Uh, I will be, it would be achievements for trying something. For example, you're playing around and you try to combine two seemingly mundane items and you end up getting something funny plus an achievement. Hmm. Uh, I see how that would be special for a player, but it would be something that I would have to intend for the player. You know what I mean? Like I would have to actually set up a, an item combination for that, so I would be... I see. I see what you're saying. It could be that could still be an achievement, but I'm. But uh, it would be interesting to find an achievement that I didn't really design, or I didn't really, or like you know what I mean. There, the game didn't contrive.
trying a an off the wall item combo. It's an idea. Oh, there you go. The server just holds one bit per seed. Like trying to throw something salty at a slime and it ends up killing it and you get an achievement. Ah. Oh, you're not talking about combining two items in the in the games combining in the crafting. You're talking about just using two using things in a unique way. Oh, okay, I get it. I get what you're saying. I was confused there for a minute. Okay. Well, I'm just going to call that the using the using the salt on the slime achievement. You know what I mean? This is like, think about something that would kind of be like that. Bomb only run? Yeah, we got, these are, these should kind of all be definite runs. Top hat only, swordless is basically, you don't get the sword. Um, bombs only, we could also have blink only. Which would be is going to be really interesting to find out how I can program this into the game so you can get the blink without getting any other weapon. But I'm going to make that happen for sure because I love this. I love that achievement. All these weapon achievements are sweet. Yeah, it's a it's a big file for sure. No matter what. There's 10k possible. No, there's 308 million possible seeds. It's just six letters. The 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 seed is six letters. That's it. It's just six letters. Six English letters. 26 per seed. Six to the 26 powers. 308 million, approximately. Complete the game under X time. Oh, I guess that's kind of the speed run, right? Yeah, yeah. There should be that for sure, right? It's just the speed run, which means complete in under one and a half hours or so, something like that. We'll set a time limit. It might be two hours, actually. This, yeah, or two and a half even might even be fair. I don't even know yet because no people aren't really playing the game that hard yet. Well, I haven't, I haven't actually tracked it, so maybe people are playing it that hard, but who knows. I doubt it at this point. But once the game gets released, then this stuff's going to start happening for sure. So we're going to... I think this one is called Any Percent. And... I hope that's Any. Maybe, did I do that? I don't, it might have been that. Anyways. Okay, this should be... Enough to get us started. Let's set some breakpoints. Oh, I need to make sure this is actually going to call some code. So, sir, kids are no, no, no. This is Steam. Steam to CPP. So, we're not setting to the leaderboards yet. Okay. Oh, I need to write some code for setting the leaderboard. Uh, but I think setting achievements is actually pretty easy, and that's already done. If it works, let's see. Oh, 26 to the 6. Yeah, yeah, not 6 to the 26. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how do you get the beta key? Yo, yeah, just email me. Sorry. Um, yeah, congratulations once again, Teak, to winning a key. Teak saved, if everybody's watching the stream, you can get points by just watching, right? As long as you're following the stream, you can watch. You get, I mean, you get points for every minute that you watch. And you can raffle those points to get yourself a free beta key for Songbringer. And Teak tried three times before and lost every time. 
And uh, because when you raffle off a thousand points, you get a twenty-five percent chance, and then but then for every thousand points more, you get another twenty-five percent chance. So he saved up all the way to four three thousand nine hundred ninety-nine points today and tried it and won. Congratulations once again. So, anyways, just send me an email. My email is nat at wizardfoo. Nat at wizardfoo.com. And I will email you back your Steam key. Congratulations again. Yeah, yeah, totally. But uh, Dragon Master, it's less than that because each seed is only 32 bits as a number. So I have, a, I have an algorithm. It's essentially a hashing algorithm that takes those six letters and turns it into a 32-bit number which has some error of margin so that if there's a certain seed that needs some salt to succeed in creating a world that it all works out really, really well. So 32 bits is all it needs for each. That's only four letters. So it's less than 37 megs. To players, it's six letters. To the game, it's a 32-bit integer. Unsigned. Okay, so setting an achievement is just... Uh, Okay, we have to initialize. So I kind of copied all this code off of um, Steam's website and everything. I cleaned it up a little bit, but so now I'm just I'm using it for the first time, and I need to basically make this Steam achievement stuff. Okay. Oh, it re automatically requests stats when it creates it. So. So where does it set this MB initialized to true? Oh, there it is. On user stats received. So we need to log in as soon as possible. Or or we would need to call a callback, which sets um, sets the achievement after it's already gotten its user stats received. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's letters only, Zilton. What? But no, it's not. What? Thirty-two bit integer has a lot more possible values. No, 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 not storing. I just no, 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 no. Storing a binary. If you sorted binary on disk, it would be a lot less than thirty-seven megs. Thirty-two bit integer is stored straight like that. Straight thirty-two bits. That's all you need. Anyways. <clears throat> So yeah, let's make a callback. So when we call set achievements, it can automatically log in and then set the achievement after it's logged in. Boom. Okay. Actually, I'll make it an array of functions to execute after request stats succeeds. So that I can stack up multiple different functions. Uh, uh, this is gonna be a this is definitely gonna be a private. So we'll make a vector of callbacks. Wait, can that work? If we should make these functions, vector function. Uh, they. I think void void is really what is all we need. Yeah, because we can capture the value we need in the lambda. Yeah, let's just do void void. Okay, so this is um,
Stats received funks. Is the one with the title I can has key? <laughs> I can has key? I can has cheeseburger? Stats received funks. Okay, so once we receive receive the funks. Um, so we're going to loop over all of the stats received funks. And run them all. Did you know that function objects cannot be compared? I was kind of pissed off by that. I wish they could be compared. They can only be compared to null. Yeah, we well, yeah, we probably mean different things, huh? I meant to have a table for the achievement of use unused. You need thirty. Oh, a table. Are oh, you talking about databases? Oh yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh huh. Oh. Okay. So yeah. Oh, let's just run this. Bam. Run all the funks. And I guess this should store all of its achievements. Oh, I guess it maybe it already does. Achievement has oh yeah, it has all its data stored in it. So we could we extract those, throw them into another function after we've done it. Blah blah blah. Okay, cool. So now we're calling back some an array of functions after we receive the user stats. So when the when we call set achievement, we could push back a lambda function <clears throat> and then run our store stats thingy. We'll do this after we've succeeded basically. Whoops. Okay, so stats received funks dot push back a lambda, which is gonna capture the ID. D. Hmm. Takes void, returns void. Wait, what's this function return? Store stats? Bool? Bool, like it succeeded? The Hungarian notation in Steam's API? Wonder I know, I know! It totally drives me crazy, right? Being a former Microsoft employee, yes. This has some really Microsoft-y feel to it, for sure. And their website has that same feeling. You're like, why are these, why is the text on this website so small? Okay, so we don't need to even check the, re the return value, really. Dude, that's easy as hell. So yeah, we we've already requested stats. Damn it, we don't need we don't want to do that. So we want to push back our functions and then request stats. We don't care whether it succeeds or not, we're not returning that. And then here in request stats, if we've already initialized, if MB, and oh, I should start renaming these. If we've already initialized, just return. Blogged on. I know, based on what you know about Microsoft APIs. King Games and Mobile Strike? I saw some ads for that. Is it is it horrible or what? 
Apparently the Windows kernel itself has a really good API, I've heard. Huh. Okay, let's try this out. See if this freaking works. So we want to do the, oh, and I want to get the, um, wait, is this returnable? Yeah, I returned the bull. Okay, so if we couldn't set the achievement, we'll log out. Oh, I couldn't do it. Couldn't set achievement. And same with what does the store stats function do? Store the current data on the oh store stats. Right, right. Okay. Okay, we we don't care about this one really as much, but we need to put it in our in our check here and make sure that all our calls to the Steam server are working somewhat. Couldn't store stats. Okay, let's see if this works. I'm gonna set a breakpoint here. I'm gonna set a breakpoint there. And this should just work. I, I got it all hooked up in the game. So when you're at the very end of the game, phase credits, here, it's gonna, it's gonna for sure try and set an achievement. It's either gonna try and set 100% achievement or the any percent achievement. I don't remember whether I spelled these right or named these right. We'll find out. So I can take away that breakpoint and just let it do that. Okay, so let's go pick up the end game and see if this works. Mobile Strike never shows gameplay on their adverts. I know. They're not proud of their game, right? It's using music from other games? Oh, wait, we want to play. They have Arnold Schwarzenegger ads? That's really? All right, there. So it's just, um, it's just finished the game. I don't think it's, at this point, yeah, the screen is still black behind me because it's faded out. It's it's about to fade in right now and show the player, oh, you got this much percentage items, you got this much percentage of the map, and here's your final score. But that's currently invisible. What is taking so much CPU right now? You're being debugged. Okay, we've got a breakpoint set up, so after we get our call back from Steam, we should be hitting this function. Hopefully we get that. If we don't get that, it's simple. Let's set up, step into the request stats function. This is not initialized yet, which is what the important part was. That's cool. Um, do we got stats? Yes. Is the user logged in? Yes. I do that at the beginning of the game. Um, now we're gonna request current stats so we can go let it run. Great. We got our callback. Awesome. So we invoke this from the on user stats. We're calling all of our receive functions. So if we had another one in here too, this would also run. If we're like, for example, if we tried to set an achievement and get an achievement, both within a few hundred milliseconds of each other or so, it would have called both of those. Out of curiosity, what do the bracketed numbers in your console output mean? Oh, those are, um, that's the current tick. Yeah, so, um, you know, I divide up all, all of the game's updates into ticks, which are fixed delta time, right? So a tick is like always 0.03 seconds or 0.06 seconds or whatever your max FPS set setting is currently set to. Um, 
And then, so the ticks are always uniform, and the animate calls are always as fast as they possibly can come. So animate has a random de tick delta. Ticks always have a fixed time delta. And then this just shows you what tick I'm at in the current, in the game. So the game starts at zero. After 0.03 seconds goes by, it's tick one. And then it's tick two, tick three, tick four. Okay, great. So let's step to the next statement. Hey, it didn't break either. So it actually set that achievement for me. Did I guess the right? There's no way I guessed the right. Oh, it worked. It worked. Look. Achievement unlocked. Any percent. Oh. Nice. That's badass. I, okay, we don't even need to really see anything else. Because the leaderboard thing is not working yet. Oh, it might have already... Tr yeah, it actually probably tried to set to the leaderboard already. So, let's check this out, though. Um, if I go to my Steam view now... Look! Oh, I've got one of two achievements unlocked for Songbringer. i got to eventually, like, delete this from my account, because I'm... Because I actually haven't beat the game yet. Believe it or not. I've had to play the game over and over and over and over from the beginning. But I've never actually beat Songbringer yet. One of these days. Once the game's done. <sighs> Solar Flare! What's up? I've been avoiding the stream to avoid spoilers. Good for you! Good for you, man! But I noticed you're working on achievements. Does that mean the game is almost done? It's... No. No, it's not. It's going to be the er the very, very earliest this game could come out would be like um, autumn. So the beginning of, you know, fall of this year, third quarter, right? Yeah, third quarter. No, fourth quarter. Sorry. Beginning of fourth quarter. Yeah, that's the, that's exactly right, Saladongs. It's mostly that's what I'm getting. That's why I'm doing achievements right now because I want the game to be feature complete. I just want to get all these little tasks done. You know, like tomorrow I'm actually going to start on Jib, so you actually be able to play co-op mode as Jib. But anyways, all the features are going to be complete, and it's totally right. There's there's a to get the game to be 100% content complete is going to take at least three more months. You know, I'm going to be focused a lot on. Um, the bosses, the items, and the puzzles in the middle and late game for the next few months. And then, and the final story and the cutscenes and all that. So that's all on my plate, but that's all content. As long as I have all these systems in place, it'll be pretty easy to throw in more content. Content is like easy. You can get real, I could smoke weed and get really high and make content. Content's easy as hell. Systems are hard though. Systems introduce bugs and feet, you know, it's all. What feature creep is. So Solar Flare, man, hey, it's good to see you. I'm glad, I'm glad you said hi, and I'm glad um, that uh, I know I know you're watching the project somewhere. So it's cool, it's cool that you're watching the project, man. And um, I can't wait to deliver the final game. It'll be as soon as I could possibly make it, but as soon as that will be, like I said, it's fall. Uh, no, co-op mode is not online, Zilton. It's not online. It's only local. So yeah, you can only play with two controllers on one computer or pe two people on the same keyboard or whatever you want to do for get two players on the same computer. But yeah, or same PlayStation, Xbox, or whatever if the game gets there. Yes, yes, Buffu does have a does have a comment feature. I don't know how it works, but Zilton does. All right, Solar Flare. See you, man. Yes, I can 420 blaze the content. Totally. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This has become a quote. Yeah. That's my, that's my quote right there. I think this, okay, so now we need to work on this set leaderboard function. It's going to work the same way. 
set leaderboard. So set leaderboards will have a function after it's gotten a leaderboard, it's found a leaderboard, it will run some functions. So, cause this is all asynchronous code. If anybody's coded in JavaScript already, you already know all about asynchronous code. So that's, I'm just doing asynchronous code here, but in C++, basically. So yeah, we're gonna do a vector of functions to run as soon as the leaderboard has been ferreted out. Pafu, <laughs> this is the longest quote ever. Leaderboard found funks. Okay, so we start the leaderboard off with nothing. We find the leaderboard. On finding the leaderboard. Here's where we run our functions. Okay, so for all the functions in the found, what do they call it? Leaderboard found funks. If f's not equal to null, f. Oh, I forgot one really important thing here. Leaderboard funks dot clear. And same thing for the stats. Once we've gotten all of our functions randed, we need to get rid of them. Stats receive funks dot clear. Okay, there we go. Now we're now we're safe. Now we're back on sane sane grounds. I know, right? <laughs> Took them half a year to make spotlight results navigable by arrow keys. I know, God. My God, I wish Steve Jobs was still alive. Man. It's like the qu the quality went down, I think, a little bit after after he left us all here on Earth. It's, it's Apple. Do you need more reasons? Hold on. I think it, wait, the whole thing needs to, if we're calling this again, if we call this again, what happens? Set achievements, set stats received, funks, pushback, request stats. Oh no, we need to, we need to process, um, Run funks. Run funks. Okay, so now we have a separate method for running the functions, and we can do that if we request the stats again and we already initialized. So we can just call run funks here. We're initialized. Instantaneous asynchronous blam. Julestrom, we gotta summon jobs. We do, we need to summon him. I like Apple, but sometimes they're ridiculously slow to iterate on some things. Totally. God. Some features in Xcode I wish they would iterate on. I think Apple's extreme caution and perfectionism get in the way of releasing very up. Uh huh. Yeah, maybe that is. Maybe that's actually a symptom of Jobs' influence, right? Let's just make this simpler and call that funks. Funks, funks, funks. Dot clear. We're running funks here. We're running funks there. Running funks everywhere. I sound like I sound like a children's book right now. Where does it at? Oh, here we go. Funks that push back. Okay, so now I'm gonna mimic this behavior, which is better.
So on finding a leaderboard, we run funks. But if we have already have the leaderboard, If leaderboard is not equal to zero, then we could just call run funks. Oh no, actually we do need to, to call this every single time. So this works differently because we might be loading a different leaderboard at this point. Okay. All right, all right. Why isn't there a way to throttle iCloud back up, right? With the great God Zolala Loft. Okay, so upload score and download score are now uh, let's make these uh, lambda base so these can be asynchronous as well. So download scores is just um, pushing to the funks a lambda really download scores should have a name that's looking for. Um, and when it's done here, it's gonna go. So this will be fine. Leaderboard name. Okay, and then this is uh, download this. Oh, so we need to capture this. Finally, we're capturing something. Apple Dev program. I kind I kind of do. I guess I have the I have the iOS Dev program. I have to pay for it every year. It's like a hundred bucks a year. It, it was a bit cold here, anyways. Really? Toss me to a volcano. <laughs> so we're downloading oh yeah yeah so we have our leaderboard we're downloading the entries and then we call our own callback function and this effectively becomes a void function we don't need to Cool. And then the same thing for upload scores. Cons car star name. Actually, find leaderboard has now become more of a private function. So download scores, upload score. Also, this is going to return a void. And we're just going to call these two things after we get a successful call to find leaderboard name. We also need to capture score so we can push it. And that's it. Set a breakpoint here and here. Test these out. Really, it's just, it's more of upload score that we want to check out first. Oh, you need push no notifications. Ah. Um, Julestrom, I think you can do push notifications without um, actually having the dev program. It might, wait. No, I might, maybe that's wrong. 
And I think you can I think you can actually do test push notifications on your own device and stuff like that. With yeah, no, I, I'm actually pretty I'm I'm certain of that because I know I've I've done push notifications before for my last game, and um, it they do give you a way to set up your own like debug server type, um, or it's no what do they call it? Um, uh, sandbox. You can have your own sandbox push notifications or whatever, and I think you can do that with their free dev account. I don't know though. Yeah. The Cloud Kit. I don't know. I don't know what Cloud Kit is. They got they got so many new features. Right? Every year it's like Apple's like, all right, let's just throw in five different new keywords. It's gonna be five new things. All right, and now we don't need this leaderboard callback function. Wait, no. Wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah, this one's gonna be leaderboard dot. Download scores. And this one is leaderboard dot upload. Upload score. Key value. Okay, so now we should be setting to the leaderboard. And I think this leaderboard callback should still work too for the other one for on download score where it copies and yeah, and calls the leaderboard callback. All right, and we would need to do the same thing for the getting achievements. So getting achievements, we need a callback, achievement callback type. Kit achievement callback type. Achievement callback. And then once we get the user's achievements, Oh, there is no get achievement function yet. Get achievements. All it does is request stats. And then request stats, when it's finished, it needs to call uh, if achievement Achievement callback is not equal to null. Achievement, achievement? I spelled it achievement. You know, just sorting it a little bit. Achie achievement. Achievement. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really? Yeah, really. I don't know what, I don't know what CloudKit is. Other than rewriting Windows, that's the best thing they could do. Yes! I'm glad that quote, that quote came up. CloudKit is basically core data that doesn't suck. Uh, combined with online connectivity of cloud stuff. Oh. Okay, um, I, um, uh, achievement callback, here we go. Oh, but the achievement callback takes some parameters. What does it take again? Achievements pointer, that's right.
All right. So we're going to create an array of achievements. Kit achievement callback type. No, no, no. Kit achievement? That's right. Kit achievement. Okay, num achievements. Uh, I mean, okay, there. So now we're passing all the data for the achievement callback and into it. So now we just need to populate. Populate it. This is the vector of achievements I dot name. This is bad code. Oh my God, Steam, Steam's example code is bad. They forgot to divide by the size of a character, which is typically one, but not necessarily one. So this is some bad code, man. Bad coders. Anyways, this should be kit name max. I mean kit achievement name max. The description we're copying over V I desk. C come on, Steam. What? Get with the program. Divide by, at least divide by size of ac RGA name. You know, I'm gonna do that right now. There. Now it's proper code. See that kids? Anybody watching this stream? This is an important thing right here. Okay, and then this is the desk max. And we also need to copy vi dot achieved, which is something in the data as well. Let's figure that out. To be fair, I don't think we have an expect Steam games to be running on Spark, right? <laughs> I know, yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. That's it's much fairer to admit that. I guess I'm just overly pedantic sometimes. I see the flaw, the possible flaws and things. I'm like, God, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, or whatever architecture, right? This is a pretty hypothetical architecture right here. I don't even know of one, but I know there is one. There has to be. Moore's laws would not be have been written. MB achieved. Oh, here it is. Into VI. That achieved. And there, we're done. This is the really the important part. This part, uh, it's just storing stuff in this class as well. I don't even need to do this, but anyways. So now we've got everything done so that it can we can see This works, so we could call get achievements, and we need to make sure we call achievements dot achievement callback equals callback. There, so we should get um that function should be called. 
Yeah, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. I want to be. I want to see set achievement. Wait, we already we already looked at set achievement. Set achievement worked. Let's see what happens the second time we call it, anyways. And I want to look at. Yeah, let's just throw in the breakpoints here. Get achievements and set achievement. And this function here, we need to, yeah. Okay, we're ready to do this again. Yeah, you shouldn't rely on architecture assumptions ever, right? Mm-hmm, yep, yep. Might define car as like a seven bits or a fuzzy bit or something crazy. We're like, what? I never planned for this. I didn't sign up for this. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go into the game, pick up the end game item, which is gonna trigger the end game, and then it's gonna calculate my score and um, all that. And we'll chest out this achievement now. So turn off skip to menu. I'm gonna have to keep skipping to the menu. Here we go, so I'm picking up the end game button thingy. The end game is not finished. This is not how it will be. There will be cutscenes and other awesomeness. <clears throat> uh, okay, so we have properly called set achievement from tally score. Uh, back here in tally score, let's check out what how this score actually turned out. Oh yeah, fastest time, slowest time, play time. <laughs> no, that's a lot. Map percent fifty three percent. I had a percent, 18%. My overall score was 241,000, which is a, on a scale of, of 0 to 1, that's about 0.25, basically. Okay, so back in set achievements, we are pushing back this function and then we're going to request stats. So let's see it once more because I've already set this achievements. I want to see what happens when I've already set an achievement. Request current stats. Cool. We're ready to get our result of that. We're uploading the score. Oh, this is the up. Oh, okay, so what just happened there was um, it sent off the request to post the achievement, um, and now it's going to the leaderboard. Oh, it already did the leaderboard part. This is the result of the leaderboard. Okay, so it did both of them at the same time. Just about, but it the the leaderboard result came back faster. So the leaderboard result is already here. It might oh my god, now that I'm delaying for so long, I wonder if the achievement will I'll be able to see that. Hopefully the network packet all worked out and stuff. We'll see. Okay, but first let's test this out. See if the uploading the leaderboard is all what we meant to happen. This and on, let's check out our score. 30, is that, is that right? 31,000? I thought it was something else. Like 24. Hmm. Oh, this totally depends on the leaderboard as well. We're posting to two leaderboards here. Oh my god, if I'm posting to two leaderboards at once, this could be a problem for this function. This might be all messed up already. That could explain what this this 3, 317 here. Yeah, that is. I remember. The time for the game was like 31 something. So this is the time leaderboard. Okay, so what's this thing's leaderboard number? I don't know what I don't know if this is right, but let's let's just let it run. Oh, I know what to do here. I'll make a map of leaderboards to names. This is just bullshit to do it that way. Yeah, this needs to be map, string, 
Steam leaderboard T, which is a UN64 leaderboards. And I'll comment that out and do that on the next build. So I'm going to, I'm going to hopefully, hopefully I've still got the data for the other function. It looks like I got another call to, wait, no, is this? Oh, oh check it out. The, the achievement did work. So it's even ID, any percent. Oh, it looks like it succeeded. Okay, so noted. Um, I okay. If anybody's paying attention here to what's going on on Steam and stuff, yeah, this is per, this is a good moment for me to share. Um, I just set an achievement. I had already accomplished. So I'm on Steam, and I've already gotten this any percent. And I just watched it call again the set achievement, which I had already achieved. And it didn't do anything on my Steam. It didn't notify me that I had already... It didn't notify me at all. And it didn't change the Steam achievement thing. And But it also just returned like okay. It didn't file an error. So good. That's how, that, that's how Steam handles that situation. So I can get rid of these. All right, so let's see if it actually, um, how it worked. Like, here's the game tallying up your score and all that. It gets like, oh, you got a score, 241. But did it work on Steam? Is Steam's leaderboard been updated? Let's go to the Steam community for Songbringer and check it out. See if it even has leaderboards yet. Where would I go for leaderboards? I think you got to go to your player page and then Songbringer. No. And then like achievements or something. Like, show me all my achievements, whereas... Yeah, right? It's really, it is interesting how they do their API. Oh, here we go. All games. What am I? Where am I? What is this link? Steam community ID. This is me, games. Oh, if I had just gone to games? Oh, okay. So here's my, here's my regular Steam page. I click on games. Then oh, and I could go to stats and stuff here. So it doesn't look like it's added any stats yet. And either I didn't upload to the leaderboard correctly, or or it just doesn't have any stats yet. Alright, well, I can live with that, I guess. Next thing I'll do is I'll test out the getting of achievements to see what achievements I've gotten and also the getting of leaderboards to see if that works. <laughs> Man, thanks again everybody. So cool to see so many people back this game. I need to hide the UI when I'm doing the, c the credits here. Completely hide the UI. Except for maybe the map. The map. It's kind of cool to see the map. Can we name something now? You can name whatever you want anytime, man. Hey, what's up, Overcaster? 
How much of a pain was it to make a custom bitmap font that supports Unicode? It was, I, yeah, I just added them on an as needed basis. Totally. Let me show you font dot font. It was a pain for sure, but it wasn't that bad. So I started with this regular font with the regular characters, A through Z and all that. And then I added on on a, some of the more common ones. So we've got like A hat, you know, all the A's, all the E's, all the I's. And then, draw, you know, I had to draw all, all these in pixel art. But once I got all these done and like had most of the most common Unicode characters that people use in their names, it's pretty neat to be able to show people their, their names in their language kind of, you know. You named me Wizard Funk? That's pretty good, man. I like it. Is it like Wizard Funk, like P-U, that's a Wizard Funk? Or is it like Wizard Funk, like bree, bree, bree? Or like boo, 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 boo? So let's get achievements now. Get and set, okay, that's gonna be in title scene. Interfaces, leaderboard. We're loading the leaderboard here. Let's load the achievements. Community get achievements. Achievements. What? This doesn't need a key. Oh man, I wrote this function wrong. Whoops. Wizard Funk as in you have to wear a huge curly fro wig and start sunglasses and a leisure suit. Nice, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's the best kind of funk. Purple sparkly wig, a purple sparkly wig, and a tie dye hoodie, and 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 aviator sunglasses. Man, I'm I'm looking dope. Yes, froed out. Oh, blam! This guy. <laughs> this guy looks funny as hell. And, and, wait, and an orange suit, purple shirt, and white toe tie. I'm done up. Someone needs to draw wizard funk. That's, that someone is you, man. You're an artist, right? Show us the wizard funk. So get achievements does not just get one achievement, it gets all of them. Make sure iOS doesn't break. Kids services, iOS. Get achievements doesn't take a key. Next thing is Steam doesn't have any errors compiling by removing this parameter. Here we go, better. Wizard DJ. Is there is there one? Is there is there a good wizard DJ? So get achievements. No longer needs a key and just takes a callback type. Callback type takes um, a kit achievement pointer. And an int number in n, whatever. Oh, yeah, this is important code. I want to be like, if we're still on the same screen, then we can add choices depending on each. So for i equals zero, 
I is less than n i plus plus and the current achievement a equals v i right right say shoot sage chow this is me the lurker what's up man i know you use cocos but what do you use to edit your levels there are no levels there are no levels in songbringer there's no editor there's nothing ever ever saved to disc the game is completely procedurally generated in memory the game generates an entire world in about 250 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds or so. And that's that gives you everything. It generates all the tiles, ran randomly, procedurally, everything everything about the game gets generated all in memory. There's never anything ever saved to disk. Yeah. Alright, Overcaster. Yeah, oh yeah, if you're gonna use, um, yeah, if you're gonna use, uh, if you have a game you're writing right now and you are, you wanna, you wanna consider a format for saving your levels, if, if TMX fits your style of game, then it's pretty good. I've used TMX many times in the past. It's always done the job amazingly well. What's great about TMX is that you can store data per tile, you can store data per layer, you can also store data per map. So there's lots of ways to be really, really crafty and cool about how you um, how you store your data in your TMX. Literally, that's one thing you should know. I, I've, I've used TMX many times in the past. Let me open up the TMX editor, map editor. Here it is, Tiled. Um, tiled has this feature where, this is so long since I've ever, ever used this. But let's just say we got, we got a new thing. Let's say we got a tile. I don't have any, you can like right click on a tile or something somewhere. Oh, I have to have a tile set already. I haven't worked with tile sets in so long. But anyways, once you've got a tile set set up, I think you can right click on a tile even and set data per tile. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you were to draw a world and you got this world set up, you could have a certain piece of data for any tile that was like tile ID one or tile ID three or whatever had some a certain data. So there's, it's a really flexible, powerful format, actually. That's what I'm trying to say. So I give it a thumbs up. You're torn between using Cocos and Unity? These are big, big differences between the two. No, yeah, no, I don't think Tyler from the XNA days. Yeah. Okay, let's see about this. This shadow is a local variable. Oh. Okay, so we've got some code set up so I can get the achievements. I'm gonna skip to the menu and then go straight into the achievements menu and we should hit this breakpoint right here and we'll be able to loop over all the achievements and then once we can loop over all the achievements we can make them little um, entries here on the menu and we'll be able to see all the achievements for the whole game here. Oh, we didn't get the callback. Let's try again. So we're gonna call request stats. This thing should have an achievements callback. Yeah, it's calling back to it interfaces achievements. Oh wait. Oh, did I just do it wrong? Oh I checked it wrong. Okay, so this is um, interfaces achievements. This is checking that the current interface is the same interface that called the request. Because it's an asynchronous call. We need to make sure that once we've finish the call to the getting the achievements that we're still in the same menu hey what's up Zelda Ethan
<laughs> okay, so let's see if that worked that time. I'll go into the menu, go to the achievements. It should hit this break point right here. We're requesting stats. Waiting? Come on, come on. Oh. It didn't work. So, okay, let's do it again, see what happened. Request stats. Let's make let's put a breakpoint here. Um and then request stats we'll call when it's done it calls on user stats received. Let's see if, what we get for that. Nothing. What? Nothing. You ne you donated a dollar. Thanks, Zelda Ethan. I appreciate it, man. You, you donated and then and then bought food. Gave you points. Wow. Why didn't we get user stats received? Well, let's find out. Uh, Steam. So I'm trying to get achievements. I've set my achievement callback. I've verified that. I'm calling get achievements, which calls request stats. Request stats. Should call request current stats. And then we should get this on user stats received. That's if we've gotten all of our functions set up right. M callback user stats received. Yeah. On user stats received. Huh. We should be getting that. I don't get it. Well, getting close to the end of the stream today. Got a lot done already. Thanks for all the suggestions, guys, on the achievements. This is really cool. I have a nice list to, to go through and see what's what. Oh, hey, it worked that time. We got on user stats received. Maybe it was just a hiccup in the network or something. Uh, all right, so we got our results. Let's see. We're looping over the number of achievements. But what I want to do is put it into VI which has all its garbage data at first. The name is now blank. The description is now blank. Damn it. And then the achievement is false. I don't know what achievement this is. All right. Same thing. This one's just totally blank. And both of them are false. So it's as if this achievement is just totally borked. Well, let's see if it actually gets our data back to our callback. We should be stepping into here and yeah, getting in there. Great. <laughs> You're gonna shoot my cat? I'm already ending soon, man. I already gotta end soon. I gotta get, I gotta get dinner cooking. I don't think he, he has a cat anyways. Good call, Ethan. I don't have a cat. But I like cats. I think cats are awesome. Dude, then who's key there? <laughs> huh? uh... Alright, so does this part work? No, it didn't work. Our current interface... Oh! Okay, I see a pretty basic blunder I made here. So I forgot to set my um, my ID for the callback type. So that should work better this time. Let's set the... Get rid of that breakpoint. Back here, we don't need to see that. We don't need to see that. Actually, it kind of would be cool to see the achievement right here just to make sure... To, Maybe this worked, maybe this didn't, I don't know.
Woo! It's good progress today. Man, a lot of this achievement stuff is it's so cool to have this feature done. Now, I mean, it's not done yet, but soon it will be totally done, and then it'll just be nice to have for players, for all y'all's MP achievements. Oh, I understand why it didn't work. Because uh the request I had is wrong. Yeah, I'm just I'm giving it the wrong IDs. So there's some other ID. I need to look it up. I need to go back into the Steam website and uh, check out their data back end and remember what keys I used to set up these two achievements so far. And then use those to request their server for the right data. And unfortunately, I cannot do that on stream. Yo, Boogie! Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you made it right when I was about to shut the stream down. Oh, but Boogie, let's... Boogie, this is so cool. You missed, um, you missed, uh, something pretty amazing today. Teak went for his 3999. And Teak won. So Teak had a chance of 99.975% to get his stream, to get his Steam key, and he won it. Yeah, Sage, no problem, man. Oh, you just made it in too, Big Mac? I'm sorry, guys. My apologies. But I think I've been streaming for a while now. Haven't I? Yeah, two hours. Look at that, only 15 drop frames in two hours is amazing. Yeah, Teak, you made it, you got your Steam key. Uh, but anyways, I worked, on, I worked on achievements today and I almost got them working for reading the achievements, um, but I did work, it did work for setting one achievement, so that's cool. Oh, you have works to do anyways? Finals? Oh, congrats. I mean, what's the... I mean, uh, good luck, dude. Good luck on your finals. Best of effort. So, yep. That's it for today's stream. Um, tomorrow, I might stream. I don't know. It's kind of Memorial Day weekend, and I'm home alone. My girl's at a festival. I have to work on Songbringer, though, because I got to get this game finished. But, um, yeah, so I might stream tomorrow, or I might just take the whole day off and smoke weed all day. I don't know. Something like that. So, um, yeah, everybody, appreciate you all, and I'll check in with you next time. See ya.